Hello everyone, my name is Mary Sunderland and I am the Director of Research and Education here at the Foundation Fighting Blindness. December is an exciting month for us here at the Foundation because it's when we publish our top 10 discoveries of 2015. And some of the science is a little dense, so I'm here to give you a little bit more background and introduce you to some of the more exciting discoveries that you should keep a close eye on in 2016. So the way that we've divided our top 10 list in 2015 is into three main categories. The first category is a category we call discovery research. So this is the foundational basic research that is helping us to understand how vision works because if you don't understand it, you're going to have trouble fixing it. Now the next category is preclinical research. Now this is the research where we have a little bit more of a basic understanding already and the researchers are really focusing in on how to turn that knowledge into new treatments. And the third and final category is a category we call clinical trials or clinical research. And that's the last phase of experimentation before we can bring a new treatment to market. Um, and there's many different phases of clinical trials and I encourage you to visit our website, ffb.ca, if you have uh, additional questions. So, number one, I'm going to talk about that first category of discovery research and we have a few um, exciting discoveries that I want to profile for you. Now the first, um, the title is New Genetic Discovery helps to solve the mystery of childhood blindness. And this was a wonderful discovery involving um, two researchers that we fund, Dr. Robert Kunikoop and Dr. Michelle Caillouette out in Montreal. This was a really exciting discovery for us because it was a collaboration between two of these researchers who do such excellent work um, in vision research. And although we've made tremendous strides in discovering a lot of new blindness-causing genes, there's still many more to discover. Dr. Kunikoop actually discovered seven this year, and it was really exciting that one of those discoveries was a new collaboration with Dr. Kaiwet. Number two, this was a discovery by Dr. Gautam Awatramani out in Victoria. Now, his discovery uh, involves, the title of the discovery is using optogenetics to restore sight. Now optogenetics is a very cool thing. I encourage you to go online and Google it. You can find lots of neat videos. Um, in short, it's scientists using light to control cells. Leave it at that for now. Now, Dr. Awatramani did um, some really exciting work that got published in the world's top neuroscience journals because he discovered how um, an inner neuron in the cell, it's called an, um, an inner neuron in the eye, it's called an amacrine cell. Now, this is one of the cells that connects the photoreceptors. The photoreceptors are the cells that catch the light and that you need for vision. They connect those cells to the brain. So they're really important in transmitting information. And he made uh, a very critical discovery about how spatial information is stored in those cells, which really opens the door to new work that can be done with optogenetics. So we'll continue to follow Dr. Awachmani very closely in 2016. And the next discovery research really um, it complements Dr. Awachmani's work beautifully, and it's by Dr. David Pickett out of the University of Ottawa, who also is studying these inner neurons, the cells, again, that connect the photoreceptors to the brain. And Dr. Pickett's team made some really critical discoveries about the health of these inner neurons when the other cells around them are dying. And that's going to be, again, just critical work for the ultimate um, generation of new treatments. Now we're going to move into the next category of discoveries for 2015, and that's our preclinical discovery. So all of the research in the preclinical in the preclinical category really builds on that discovery research that I was just talking about. So the next number four discovery is linking laboratory research to patient communities. Now this is some wonderful work that's being done by Dr. Robert Gendron and Helene Perdi out in Memorial University and that they've discovered a new protein called tube down which is um, really important in the development of age-related macular degeneration. And this year they made some very important discoveries about how this protein works in the eye, not just in laboratory animals, but also in humans. 
So it's that connection between what's happening in the lab and what's happening in patients in doctor's offices around the world that is really exciting and important for our community. Number five, we're still in the preclinical category. This is a discovery by Dr. Yuri Sargovi, who's out in Montreal, and the title of this discovery is Two New Drug Targets to Slow the Progression of Retinal Diseases. It's important to think not one but two. Dr. Sargovi has discovered potentially two targets, which would be new drugs that would prevent vision loss. So this is a preservative strategy where you would introduce the drugs into the eye. He has a way to do that. And when the drugs get in there, they stop the cells from dying. And we're really excited to see how this research develops moving forward. The next discovery, number six, actually complements that work that I was talking about by Dr. Saragovi. It's another preserving vision discovery, again, involving drug development. And sometimes we call this um, neuroprotection. So it's a, it's a drug that you put into the eye and it stops cells from dying, dying. So in doing that, we can preserve vision. That's by Dr. Philippe Monnier here in Toronto. The next discovery, number seven, seven, uh, by Dr. Michel Caillouette. Uh, this is a, an amazing discovery involving stem cells, and Dr. Caillouette has been working hard really to learn how stem cells become photoreceptors, and he made some really inter interesting discoveries about the timing of that process. We have a whole article about it. I encourage you to go online and read more. Number eight, we are at... This is one of our top discoveries of the year. This is Dr. Gilbert Bernier, again out in Montreal, and he has discovered how to produce cone photoreceptors en masse. So, you know, this is like a really, really exciting for us because not only is this a discovery that was published in a top science journal, it is a new tool that is now available to researchers around the world, and we're hopeful that it will drive more people to do more research on cone photoreceptors, because the next step for Dr. Bernier is to get those photoreceptors ready to transplant into the eyes of patients who need their sight restored. So we'll hope Dr. Bernier will continue his good work in 2016. Number nine, this is our last discovery in the preclinical category, and it was a discovery by Dr. Andres Naji, who's here in Toronto, working on combining stem cell therapy and gene therapy to generate new site-saving treatments. Now, he's one of the leaders in the field of regenerative medicine, and we are so excited that he's now focusing his talents and expertise on vision. Um, and his plan is to sort of genetically modify stem cells so that they can deliver a drug when it's needed in the eye. So this would result in a one-shot treatment for those people with wet AMD who now perhaps receive uh, monthly or, or um, you know, a couple times a month injections into the eye. Now we move into our final category, which is clinical research. And this is a discovery I want to say a little bit more about because it's a discovery a long time in the making by Dr. Ian McDonald out in Edmonton. And he's been working since the 1980s on this project. So when he first started, there were no genes that were affiliated with a very rare eye disease called choroideremia. Now Dr. Ian McDonald has been determined, he's worked on this project, he's discovered the gene, he's worked to develop the gene test to determine if someone has crateremia, which is now standard of care. And this June, we were thrilled to announce that he has initiated Canada's first gene therapy to treat a blinding eye disease, and that, that eye disease is crateremia. So this is, uh, this is the translational process in action, moving from basic research, discovery research, discovering the gene, right through to being in the clinic, experimenting to, to test if this approach can work with humans. So we're thrilled to be sharing this research with you today. I hope that this has given you uh, an entry, and I encourage you, again, to go online and read a little bit more of the details. And of course, feel free to call me anytime because I love talking about research, and I'm always happy to answer more questions. So happy holidays to everyone, and I'll see you soon.